Tokenized Economy is Olga Feldmeyer, CEO of Digital Asset Exchange, Smart Valor. And let's bring back in Boomba's co-host, Ben Swan. Olga, thank you so much for, for being with us today, joining us from where Davos usually takes place. I want to start with, with the first question. It's going virtual this year, much like other, other conferences, other forums. What is it? What does it feel? What does it look like besides of extremely cold and snowy? <laughs> it's actually super unusual. You know, this place um, used to be, you know, the place of one of the largest top conferences in the world for 50 years, 50 years. And imagine all of a sudden it's empty. Nobody here. Part of hotels are closed. You know, this street used to be closed always, you know, for only World Economic Forum members. Now look at this. So it's really, really strange to be here at this time. It's certainly different from uh, what you were used to. I know that you've met with um, us or before here, here on Boom Bust with uh, our late uh, Bart Chilton, who you've spoken with several times. So thank you for joining us from there today. I, I want to talk about your recent article that's recommending tokenized gold. Can you explain why that's better than typical cryptocurrency? It's, it's actually not a cryptocurrency, right? Tokenized gold is basically gold which is just, you know, has as a, you know, basically track record of this unique piece of gold. You also have a blockchain recorded token, right? So you have a physical natural gold. And just as a proof that you have this gold, you have also a token, right? So it's actually as gold. The only difference that because it's on the blockchain, you can send it the same way you send Bitcoin to anybody anywhere within seconds, right? So it's basically, a, speak about it as gold. It's just, you know, and the big advantage of it is that, you know, people anywhere in the world, like think India, right? They can own gold, which is stored in London in safe, uh, you know, walls. And, and they can, you know, prove that this gold is owned by them and they can securely send it anywhere around the world. This is absolutely unique. unique. The people out there in developing countries have never luxury of, of, you know, being able to own real gold. Definitely very different, Ben. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think what Olga's talking about here is a tokenized economy in a lot of different ways. I mean, the idea that a cryptocurrency doesn't, isn't necessarily based on anything is untrue. In fact, the whole premise behind a tokenized economy is that you tokenize all different kinds of assets and gold certainly can be one of those. And the other thing she was alluding to there at the end, which is very important, is fractional ownership, right? Because any kind of, of, of digital currency allows for that fractional ownership where people wouldn't be able to. Now, there have been some uh, companies that have tried fractional gold in the past or made claims about uh, using digital gold in the past or even art uh, but the, the key to all of that is the auditing system. What is the auditing system that's in place to make sure that those assets are actually owned and are actually reflected in whatever the offering is for that token? But but when it works, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a it's kind of the next step in a digital tokenized economy. Right. It's definitely interesting. Something different that we're looking at that could possibly come into play. Yeah. Olga, back in 2018, you talked about the idea that we could essentially tokenize anything. Is that where the economy is moving toward? Absolutely. It's just, you know, from the perspective of our conversation two years ago, I think it's taken us longer than we thought. Um, and the reason for that is partially the technology, you know, the scalability of the blockchain technology is the current stage where we are, but, but also partially regulation. Because when you tokenize stuff, right, take this house, Congress Center or anything, right, it becomes a security in most cases. And now what we need is, you know, exchanges uh, being able to distribute and offer for trade and this tokenized securities, right? Right. And, and the problem is, you know, the regulatory system did not catch up with this. Um, so just now we're seeing here in Switzerland, the new law coming in this year to enable this distributed ledger technology exchanges. But, but it's been a, you know, very difficult road for regulators to get grasp of it. Very much delayed, uh, much like you're saying. Ben, what do you think? Yeah, well, they're they're behind on everything. When it comes to do digital currencies, tokenized economies, uh, governments are way behind in terms of catching up with, in terms of regulation. Uh, but you know, when we talk about tokenizing the economy, I think what's fascinating about that is it doesn't have to necessarily be something that's physically 
tangible. What I mean by that is there's a lot of technology that comes back to things like file sharing uh, technology, which in some ways is tangible, but it's also a, a digital asset. Uh, or for instance, you have like Filecoin, right, which allows for breaking up servers all around the world. The value of the coin is in the actual content that's being stored in various servers. So it's a totally different way of looking at the economy and looking at the world. I think one of the reasons that uh, we're behind on it is because the people who, who generally control economies are behind. And so it goes all the way back to what we talked about at the very beginning of the show, is that there is a wave of, of people who are able to have more control and more access to financial entities, economies, and have greater control than they've ever had that disrupts the system. And whenever you create disruption in a system, certainly when we're talking about economic systems, there's going to be resistance. Absolutely. And Olga, you talked a, a lot about or, or continue to talk a lot about technology and where we're at these days and how we're behind essentially on where we wanted to be or would like to be. You also talk about the dif uh, different national banks, right, creating the, their own digital currencies. If these are banks, that then they're centralized. Um, is this really the ideal situation for these types of digital currencies to come from these central different uh, national banks? Uh, you know, I see no competition there. Uh, it's fine, you know, and, and it's actually great. You know, there are so many use cases for uh, digital, for uh, national bank digital currencies. And by the way, that was, you know, uh, one of the topics also during the World Economic Forum. Well, the digital <laughs> edition this year. Right. And, and, you know, of course, uh, a lot of people are talking about China, you know, the chi China is pioneering the way there. And it's interesting that actually, you know, they say, well, it's just, you know, a better way to transmit money in the system, cheaper, more efficient way, uh, you know, disguising actually the real purpose of basically better control and transparency about, you know, how the money is spent and where it goes. Uh, but apart from China, you know, there are like, the whole topic of financial inclusion, you know, and, and um, you know, developing uh, countries being able to issue money which anybody can use in the digital way on a very low cost base, right? So this is the whole point. Because look, our banking system is very expensive, right? All these ATMs, banks, regulation, like developing countries cannot afford all of this and bring the bank into the population through this infrastructure. But the, when they going to tokenize or digitalize their currencies, they open completely different opportunities. But what are some of the disadvantages here of national banks creating their own digital currencies? Yeah, well, basically for those countries, the disadvantages on one side, yes, they enable um, anybody who has a phone uh, also have a bank account in a way, and of, of course, you know, the big advantage is then it's not just payments, then the whole system can start to work, loans, investments, and so on, right? Uh, but the disadvantage for those uh, countries in particular is basically, you know, what what used to be called dollarization, right? So mm -hmm. when, you know, uh, people in the specific countries and start to use dollar, like now imagine it's digital currency and switching to digital dollar, either being issued by U.S. state or by any company. It's so simple, right? So this problem of, you know, flight away from national currencies is going to become very big. And yeah, they will need to see how they solve this problem. Yeah, Ben, you've talked a lot about the, some of the possible disadvantages. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of disadvantages to to national currencies because, first of all, when it comes to privacy, when it comes to being able to control, uh, you know, who who can even access currency, whenever uh, a you know central bank controls the currency through a digital means, obviously there are more controls. The promise of cryptocurrency or digital currency was originally that it was supposed to expand economic freedom, not restrict it. And so uh, any kind of totalitarian government or any kind of government at all has the ability to really restrict who can access and who can utilize um, their currency when everything becomes digitalized. So that's something we have to keep an eye on. But back to what Olga was saying in the beginning, too, you have to look at uh, the fact that so much of the world is unbanked. There's a, there's a fascinating uh, kind of look at history. If you look at the last 100 years in, in the continent of Africa, Many people there on that continent did not have TVs or radios ever. They simply went from having nothing to having cell phones. They skipped an entire hundred years of technology. That is happening on the banking side. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, definitely. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Olga Feldmeyer, CEO of Digital Asset Exchange, Smart Valor, Boomworks co-host Ben Swan. Olga, thank you for, for being with us from Davos today. Uh, ben, great to have you as always.